Good day, all anglers. I'm Rudolf from Sports Centre Group. Um, I'm the fishing expert in, in Eisner Branch. I'm just going to show you a basic trace for Lagoon Estuary fishing for grunter, steenies, and cobs. I'm going to use a, a one ounce ball sinker and a barrel swivel for, with a bead and a 3 0 mustard uh, red snapper hook. The reason for the bead is for the bead to put behind the knot when it's on the main line, slide the sinker up first. I'll show you later in the video how it works. Um, the first, I'm going to do the trace. I'm going to use about a meter of 0.35 for the hook trace. I'm going to use my Rapala pliers, side cutters, and I'll just cut that off there. Um, I'm going to do the normal standard size blood knot where you push it through the loop, you hold your finger in the middle, it's basically easy. You turn it eight times, spin it eight times. This is called the blood knot. I'm going to lock it by pushing it through the hole you see there and then slide it through another loop just to lock it on the other side. I'm going to wet it a bit just to get some friction on the line so it doesn't cut off when you catch that big fish. If the big fish it won't pull off and I'm going to clip the tag off on the swivel that's sticking out. So basically what up there is about almost a meter of trace line there. And I'm going to use my 3.0 mustard red snap hook. I'm going to do the same eight times through the little loop at the bottom and then through the locking knot. And pull it tight. Right. So I'm going to clip it off with our normal polar light cutters and there is your short trace about a meter. Why it's uh, slightly a little bit longer is for when you rig a worm bait so it moves a bit more around. I'm using a slightly heavy sinker when you throw a heavier bait. I would like to use a, a lighter sinker because when you throw it it actually moves with the current more. The same rig I'll use for a cop trace also later on. I'll see and then I'm gonna just use this as my main liner from my rod slide my one ounce sinker onto the main line like that put the bead on it's in between slide that through there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same knot as what I did with the hook and this whole trace I'm going to put it through the there spin it eight times push it through the bottom Through the other loop, wet it, and pull it. I'm also going to cut it off again. Now, the reason I put the bead in between, like I said earlier, the bead will prevent the sinker from bumping when you hook a big fish bumping on that, uh, on that knot, so it damages the knot. So, what it does is when you ever hook a big fish and this thing is bumping, bumping, bumping like that, it will actually cut the knot, damage the knot. The bait I'm going to present to you today is a Moonshine worm, you have to have a recreational bait license for it and a normal your angling license as well. Uh, I do have one on hand as well. I'm gonna rig up a moonshine. It's called Vanskin in Afrikaans, but it's moonshine in English. Usually you start from the tail or you can start from the head side. You just start from the I start from the head to keep the bait on the bait holder hook. So I'll slide it perfectly up onto the shank of the hook all the way through. Down. Right. The reason I use a bait holder hook, it will keep the bait on the hook at all times. Most of the time, instead of there's small little peckers around, basically, that will be your bait, your moonshine bait, on your lagoon trace for that's not for grunter, skinny cob, blacktail, stump nose, all your lagoon fish. Thank you very much.